space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilization, to boldly go where no one has gone before. That, ladies and gentlemen, if it's not familiar to you, is the opening short monologue to the Star Trek franchise. You can't find it on that piece of crap they're calling Star Trek nowadays, but I also want to point out that when the show originally premiered in the 60s, it said at the end where no man has gone before. But by the time in the uh, early 90s, when the Star Trek The Next Generation came out, they switched it to where no one has gone before. Why? Because it wanted to include women. So it was woke before woke was annoying. Good morning, everybody. I'm Cliff London, and this is my channel, Cliff London Uncensored. Today, what I want to talk about is why Star Trek Discovery is uh, a completely worthless, crappy-ass piece of shit show that should not be called Star Trek. It should be more called, like, uh, insert whatever teen drama in space. You know, in my time, it would have been 90210 in space. Coffee here. I'm going to put it in a nutshell, and I'm going to tell you why Discovery sucks here, and I'm going to try not to make the uh, video go long here. And this video is directed towards a certain sect of you. Basically, anybody that watches Star Trek and loves Star Trek and understands Star Trek, but I'm going to go with it here. Uh, Star Trek Discovery is a pretty awful show. I'm going to tell you why it's not Star Trek. Here we go. Gene Roddenberry wanted to... His vision of Star Trek was to present humanity after interstellar travel, after the discovery of uh, other intelligent life. The show takes place way beyond our time, which would mean a lot of the social ills and the social stigmas and things like police brutality, uh, discrimination for the, over food, water, and resources, all those things uh, are things of the past because science has solved those problems. So science has solved those problems because you don't have, like I said, you know, you don't have people vying for resources on earth anymore. You don't have like police brutality in you know in the future because you can't you don't need to be brutal if you just have set phasers to stun you stun them and they go to trial. I, I'm not even sure if they even put people to death. Uh, I, that's one thing that I don't know about Star Trek. I don't know if they believed in death penalty. These things never came up. Why? Not really anyway. They never came up because I mean they came up in the show in similar ways, but they didn't come up uh, as a direct replica of what we are doing in our society today if that makes sense but back to the point Gene Roddenberry had a vision of humanity at its best or for us watching at home something to strive for humanity had become united because once you discover people with blue skin and other aliens you can travel to other worlds pretty much our little four percent difference in skin color we will be united as human beings because we will realize we are not alone Racism and discrimination in itself is kind of uh, selfish on everybody's parts because it just assumes that, you know, we just look for something that's different. You know, it's something that's in people's DNA, but that's another video. But um, Gene Roddenberry's vision was a world where, first of all, the damn show is called Star Trek. You are trekking through the stars, seeing out new life and new civilizations. So we got Gene Roddenberry with his, you know, Better vision of humanity. Humanity has gotten beyond its social constructs and ills and racism and things like that. Now, you do see in the show where it does deal with it, but it's not nearly in the same way as a shitty-ass Discovery deals with. Uh, 
I would say it's put a lot more tastefully and the emphasis is not on it. Why? Because it's called Star Trek. Not Star Stay at Home and Whine About Identity Politics and Who's Fucking Who. Which is what this crap discovery is. So we have Gene Roddenberry's vision of Earthlings finally being united as humanity. We can travel all over the universe. And when you can do that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you know, I would think that once the world expands, humanity would expand. Once you become smarter, once you become united, these things fall away. So when you have these idiots online talking about that the Federation were isolationist and how come the show never how come the old show never spoke about what happened on what well, the racism going on on earth? It's like, well, idiot, because in that show, it's not two twenty. you know, in those shows, it wasn't 2021 and nor should it ever be 2021. It should be way beyond that. And the show is escapist entertainment. It's supposed to take you out of that. Now, in Star Trek, the real Star Trek, not only took you out of your day to day slumber, because let's face it, life's pretty rough out there, you know, but it presented you with something of hope. You came away from the show feeling good because it was usually a positive solution. But what we have with Discovery, basically, <laughs> they don't care about storytelling. They spend most of the show, well, they spend most of the show emasculating and tearing down the legacy of these old characters which is so rooted in hatred because Picard it wasn't like he was a white supremacist but they in, but in that Picard show they still had to reduce him to a sniveling old feeble old man but yet this man was a hero to the Federation because see these woke people that think they're not racist they actually are because they were so consumed with hate that they were willing to let Patrick Stewart he's kind of I mean I would love and respect him but the man in old scene now probably just was thinking I'll do Picard again man I wonder if the man of, of his talent and caliber actually read that script and was cool with how they emasculated the man. They metaphorically cut his balls off. And the character didn't deserve that. But because they are so hateful. And it made them feel good because they get off on, rather than creating something of their own and building lore around it and selling it to people and making it become a beloved character in society, they have to piggyback on these franchises, most of which are created by white guys, but no one says that. See, Discovery focuses on identity politics. And by the way, Sonequa Martin-Green is a brilliant actress. You could have put Angela Bassett and gave her this shit script and she wouldn't have been able to do anything with it. But the rest of the actors in the show, I mean, I, I don't know if... I, first of all, I can't even really comment on the actors in the show because the shit's not Star Trek. It focuses on... Its primary focus is on people's sex. And you know, and it's not even done... They, they overdo it because, you know, they could... If you want to have a non-binary character we want to have this character keep that you know that character just keep in mind it makes no sense for them to even be sitting around walking around that ship like they are oppressed in any sense of the word because you think that millions of years in the future when you can just walk up to a machine and go t earl gray hot and something synthesizes you think or and, and a guy walks past you with tentacles busting out of his head you think someone really gives a fuck who you're sleeping with Really? That would be mainly purely a human probably thing, actually, depending on the culture of the billions of alien species they encounter through their journey. But yet this show is about, I watched, uh, I couldn't even get through a half hour of it uh, because, <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I forced myself to later on, but I had to turn it off and go back to it, is, you know, you hardly really see, they hardly encounter really any alien life a lot of the show has spent them walking around the ship talking about their feelings preaching an agenda and it makes no sense and you know and if that's if there are some people out there that believe that things like this are just a platform and I would say that's a generational thing because, no, it's not just a platform. The thing with art is, is you're supposed to be able to make others relate to it without beating them over the head for it. Because, see, you could still have those relationships, but they don't even treat them the way that they treat uh, straight relationships, you know, because it's just that they're, it's just their bad taste. See, it's not, I, I don't, the relationships and things like that, I, it's not that 
that I mined, but like for example, in a regular plot twist, you know, the immediate whole plot of the show, kind of everyone's involved in making that happen. And then their personal lives are uh, kind of intertwined, almost side notes. So who they're sleeping with and stuff, you know, but it's kind of like, okay, that's when they do those, you know, they have episodes for that and they have time for that, but it's not the main emphasis. With this show, they're not concerned with exploring strange new worlds. They're not concerned with seeing out new life and new civilizations. They are concerned with sitting on that fucking ugly ass ship, warp themselves that detach it. That's ugly. Makes no sense, by the way. Uh, sitting on that ship, bitching and moaning about their feelings and how they're not accepted. This is why Discovery is not Star Trek. This is why it is not Gene Roddenberry's vision because Gene Roddenberry's vision was about, though still flawed, was about humanity learning more about themselves through contact with these aliens. Sometimes they were taught, you know, sometimes the prime directive was questioned. You know, if they'd gotten past their own past. It was questioned, not because they were sitting at home whining with each other. The questions came up because they were seeing that these, you know, that some of these issues, you know, even interstellar beings and other planets deal with them. And everyone could relate to that. Everyone white, black could sit down and enjoy the story. Nowadays, you can't escape from, you can't have sci-fi and escape from your daily, you live real life every day. You're supposed to be able to watch Star Trek and what it always was is you came away with a sense of hope right before the credits roll and Picard said, engage number one. You felt hopeful. You were able to lay down the next day and say, you know what, if, you know, if, if Data can find a way to love after how he's been treated, maybe I can too. If the United Federation of Planets could find Data not guilty, consider him a new form of life, maybe we as humanity can accept people with alternative lifestyles. You know, it was that's what Gene Roddenberry wanted the show to do. Again, this is in my humble opinion. This is what Star Trek really is. You know. And you have these people out there that say things like, oh, well, you know, not everything is uh, solved with a photon torpedo. You can tell those people are full of shit and they're probably trying to be some feminist to cuck for women because the show has never been about photon torpedoes. In fact, they hardly get into space battles at all. It's mostly interpersonal things that happen down on the planets. But again, these people that don't actually watch the show and are newbies and trying to act like they've been fans for a long time are just so full of shit. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is why Discovery sucks, because it lacks soul, it lacks purpose, uh, it's divisive, low quality writing, and by the way, fuck Anthony Rapp, you little punk, what the hell were you doing at that party at that age anyway? Uh, it panders to a woke crowd and not everyone. It's worried about who you're fucking as opposed to communicating with the rest of the damn galaxy. That's not Star Trek. It's an episode of Dawson's Creek in space. I don't know. I can't, I can't, uh, Riverdale in space. I don't know. I'm getting old, everybody. I can't even, I don't even know any teen dramas over the day. I think I, I think I hit, yeah, like Riverdale in space. You know, they just walk around for hours crying and shit about their sexuality and their skin color, which is totally ridiculous when you're millions of miles away from Earth. It makes no sense that you that they land on an alien. Uh, in, oh, God, I can't. Okay, so anybody, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section. Do you like Star Trek Discovery? And do you disagree with me? That's fine. Um, or do you understand what I'm saying? Or do you actually have the narrow opinion? that Star Trek was all about, you know, uh, white people and being superior. If you really believe that, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to debate anybody about it. Uh, it was woke before it was woke before it was annoying. The show was always made for everybody. It was always 
diverse. It was always inclusive. It was all those things before these morons got their grubby little no talent hands on it. Anyway, everybody, uh, I'm Cliff London. I hope everybody has a good day. Live long. Actually, it's this. No, it's this. Live long and prosper.